Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to be working with the Simon Says Stamp April 2021 card kit. And this is full of some really beautiful sentiments and patterned papers and an absolutely gorgeous um, floral stamp. So I have ended up splitting this into three different videos. The first one is going to be three slimline cards. Uh, the second one will be using some patterned papers, and the third one will be working with that uh, gorgeous floral cluster stamp that was included. Um, but jump in here into card number one. I'm going to be using some jelly bean green cardstock. So I sort of made these to fit the pattern papers and the designs that I'm using. Um, so all three of these slimline cards are going to be different sizes. Um, I just sort of had fun with it and worked with what I had trimmed out. This first one is going to, final measurements are going to be three and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And I'm laying everything out here. I wanted to stamp the design of this floral behind my pattern paper, but I wanted it to be very subtle. So I'm going to pull in my Versamark ink and that way it'll be sort of just a two-tone look in the background. And it is going to be mostly covered up, but I thought it gave it just a little something extra um, back behind that pattern paper. So I'm going to go ahead here, stamp that out. I will um, hold this in place for just quite a bit of time. I want to make sure that it's making nice contact with my cardstock. Sometimes I think actually just letting the stamp sit longer on the cardstock is better than pressure because it really allows that ink to soak in. So if you're having trouble um, getting a crisp image, try holding your stamp in place, just holding it there, you know, not too firmly, but just, just let your ink sink into that paper gonna lay everything out here and I decided I wanted a little bit more of that floral along my bottom corner now <clears throat> this is sort of a case of don't do as I do I really don't recommend doing this what I should have done um, was get a large stamp block or even a small one just to cover the portion of the stamp that I needed and add it that way but I had my misty out and I thought eh, it'll be okay and it was um, but I I do worry that if you put too much pressure on that top plate of the Misty, you could crack it. So um, if you do this, be very, very careful um, when you're pressing down on your stamp. It, it can take quite a bit, but if you press too hard, you, you could crack that and then you won't be able to use your Misty. So once I have that done, I'm again laying everything out, just making sure that I have this um, the way that I would like it. Everything is sort of fitting into place. I am going to take this and as I said I trimmed as I went along just coming up with the size of the card base that I needed as I was pressing things into place so I took a little bit off the bottom here and then again moving things around just to make sure I'm happy with my layout I'm gonna add some ATG to the back of that pink and cream polka dot paper and then I'm gonna add that along the left hand side about a half an inch in. Had a little bit of extra there, so I will trim off that excess. And then again, laying out my pattern paper. This was one of the cut aparts. It was probably my favorite of the cut aparts. I just think that is so pretty those beautiful florals. I actually just ordered a paint by number that looks very similar to this. I cannot wait for it to get here. I'm, I'm anxious to dig in. Uh, there, just for sizing, just proportion, I trimmed a little bit more off of that right hand side and I wanted to give this panel a little bit more of a pop. So I'm gonna add some foam tape behind it. This is also gonna give it a little more sturdiness. If you wanted it to be um, more sturdy without the extra dimension, you could also glue this onto some cardstock and then cut that out again. And that would give you, you know, a little bit more, um, a little bit more heft to the pattern paper. Of course, I have peeled away the backing and now I will go ahead and place that down on top of my card base. Just making sure that's down nice and tight. I'm gonna take my bone folder, run that along the top.
and one more trim off of the top just to make sure that's all nice and even. For the inside, I've got a Nina panel that I've trimmed to three and a half by seven and a half. And I'm gonna stamp out this longer sentiment. We have been apart for far too long. I miss you. I'm dreaming of the day when we can hug, laugh, and support each other in person. Beautiful sentiments in this stamp set. Um, perfect for the times we are living in now, which hopefully we are turning the corner from. I did grab another piece of this cream and pink polka dot. Um, this was just a leftover piece, just trimmed off a portion, and I'm adding that along the bottom there for a little something extra. I'll add some ATG to the back of my panel, place that on the inside of my card base. And that will complete card number one. For card number two, I have trimmed out this butterfly pattern paper. This was actually five butterflies in a row, but I trimmed that down to four. And then this fifth one, I'm going to fussy cut out. Uh, while I am doing that, I will let you know that the card base is made from Cranberry Cocktail from MFT. Uh, and its final measurements are three inches by six and three quarters. Um, the larger <clears throat> of the panels this is not exact, but the polka dot is roughly two and five eighths inches by six and three eighths. And then the butterfly panel is two and three eighths by six and one eighth. Again, that's roughly um, measured out. I, I wanted to make sure I had a nice even border around the butterfly, so it may not be exact. I'm gonna add some ATG and place down uh, my polka dot panel. And just making sure everything lines up there. And then I will add some ATG and place down my butterfly panel. I'm gonna stick that last butterfly in the middle here, but I wanted to give that some dimension. I'm gonna grab some of my sticky thumb dots. These are the smallest ones, and I will just add one at the top of each of those wings. I'm gonna sort of crease that in the center there, just to give myself a little spot to place down my art glitter glue. And I'll pop him right in the middle there, just holding him in place. And then I will peel away the backing on my dots and press each of those wings into place. Next is my sentiment. I decided to stamp directly on top of this and I'm gonna mix together two of the sentiments to read Thinking of You, Friend. I am just using my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. For the inside panel, this is again Nina, and it's trimmed to two and three quarters by six and a half. And I'm gonna use the sentiment, just wanted to let you know that you were in my thoughts and prayers. I've grabbed another leftover piece of pattern paper. I wanted the um, three little butterflies there. You're only really gonna see the half of the one, but I wanted to include all three. So I just slightly trimmed that down, add some ATG. I'm gonna place that along the bottom about a quarter of an inch up. And then I will go ahead, of course, and trim off that excess. Added some ATG to the back. I'll pop that on the inside of my card base. And that will complete card number two. On to our third and final card for today's video. Uh, this is again using the Jelly Bean Green cardstock from MFT. Uh, final measurements for the card base are three and a half by eight and a quarter. 
Here you can see I have trimmed out this really beautiful um, floral pattern paper. It almost matches um, the line of florals that are on that very first uh, little cut apart from the first card. I've also got this pink and black polka dot, which I'm gonna use for a background behind my florals. I'm just, again, lining things up, making sure I have a nice even border, sort of going by eye just to, to make sure everything fits into place. I'm gonna trim a little bit more off the side here, and then that should complete my card base. Yep, I'll add some ATG to the back of that polka dot panel and place that down right in the center of my card base. And then I knew I wanted to stamp my sentiment and since this is a darker background, I thought it would be a perfect time to use that new um, cream embossing powder. So I have uh, put the sentiment Sending Smiles here. I'm gonna add down some of my anti-static powder and then I will again use my Versamark ink to go ahead and stamp out that sentiment, making sure I get a nice, uh, good, crisp image of that. And then I'll add some of that cream embossing powder and use my heat gun to set that. Once I had that set, I'm gonna pop up this panel again using some foam tape, making sure to cover that really well since this is, again, a thinner um, pattern paper, not a cardstock. I'll peel away that backing and place that on the top of my card base. My inside panel is trimmed to three and a quarter by eight inches. Again, that's trimmed out from Nina cardstock. And I'm gonna stamp out, you are one of the best things in my life. And I felt like the front of the card needed a little something extra. So I pulled in some, uh, let's see, this is MFT black licorice cardstock. And I've stamped out this sentiment across the miles, uh, again using my Versamark ink, and I'm gonna heat set that with my heat gun. I'm gonna trim that down to about a quarter of an inch, and then I'm gonna place that underneath sending smiles. And I think that just, completed um, the look that I was going for there. Adds a little, a little bit of dark underneath that. And again, it was another way to use um, this really pretty new cream embossing powder. So I just made a little mark there so I knew where to trim everything. And then I'll add some art glitter glue and place that down underneath my top sentiment there. I'm using art glitter glue so that I can scooch that around just a little bit in case I don't press it down perfectly straight right away. I'm gonna add a line of this black and cream diagonal pattern paper along the bottom of my inside panel. Of course, add some ATG to the back and then place that down inside. And that will complete card number three. Here are a few close-ups of the finished cards. In the description box below, you'll find my blog post, which has additional photos and links to the supplies I've used. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.